Hey, I'm Ocean Robbins, and I'm here with my dear friend Jeffrey Smith. We're at The Truth About Cancer Live in Orlando, Florida, and we were just having this conversation about glyphosate and Roundup and organics and GMOs, which are topics that Jeffrey talks we about do that, every yes. day of his life, <laughs> and they are some of the most important issues affecting the future of life on this planet. And, um, and there's some new in information that I thought it was kind of important to share. Um, so we're we're here to talk about that. We yes. want to just have a little chat about it. We decided why not just keep why keep this just between us? It's why not true, true. why not share it more widely? So um, so I mean I could start off like you know a lot of people have been going non GMO and there's two main issues with GMOs. Of course there's BT and there's uh, Roundup resistance. And, and the process of genetic engineering causes massive collateral damage in the DNA, which can lead to things like increased allergens, toxins, new diseases, nutritional problems. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> so most G most GMOs have been engineered uh, for one of two traits. One is BT production, the other is Roundup or herbicide resistance. Right. And, uh, but, but what we're seeing now, we're, we're hearing a tremendous amount of information about the dangers of glyphosate. Right, Roundup's um, active ingredient. Right, so we're hearing that glyphosate is a probable carcinogen according to the World Health Organization. And it's a teratogen, which means it's linked to birth defects, and it's a chelator, which means it grabs minerals and makes them unavailable, and it's a mitochondrial toxin, which can lead to so many different diseases. And it's also an endocrine disruptor at medium and high doses and possibly low doses, and it causes a non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And I'm just getting started. You're just getting started. Well, I, I, well what's more, it's also actually um, been patented by Monsanto as an antibiotic. Right. And so you so. know about the microbiome. If you don't know about the microbiome, you haven't been paying attention. Those are the bugs, the good stuff, and the bad stuff inside us. It's almost like another organ, and it's involved with detoxification, creating nutrients, protecting the, the barrier of the gut. Etc. Etc. And antibiotics can kill and cause dysbiosis or lack of balance, which leads to a long list of diseases. There you go. So, yeah. So I mean, I mean, and by the way, so Monsanto tells us that that you know glyphosate doesn't affect humans because uh, it's it, affect, it interrupts the the shikimate, the shikimate, the shikimate pathway, pathway, which they say only is present in plants and bacteria. Well, guess what is in our stomach? Bacteria. Bacteria. And so uh, the bacteria that that turn carbohydrates into certain critical proteins, certain critical amino acids that we need for healthy brain function. Like serotonin, uh, dopamine, and melatonin. Right. For, not that we need those, right? Oh, well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to get away from the neurotransmitter. <laughs> yeah. So, so bottom line is that glyphosate has a host of problems associated with it. And to this point, it, that's been one of the most compelling reasons why a lot of people have wanted to move away from and still want to move away from genetically engineered foods because right. they've been sprayed with this herbicide that previously would have killed plants, but when they spray it on the plants, it, it doesn't kill them because they've been engineered to withstand it. So we'll give the scenario, you're, you're going to get a loaf of bread, by the way, we're looking at two different things so you may see us dart around. Uh, looking at a loaf of bread, it says non-GMO, and so we buy it thinking we're avoiding GMOs and Roundup, and guess what? The wheat, not genetically engineered, but sprayed with Roundup three to five days before harvest as a desiccant to dry it down. It also forces extra energy into the, into the kernel so they get a little bit bigger. It also cleans the, the field for next year. So the wheat being sprayed with Roundup just before harvest, the Roundup goes into the plant. It has a surfactant, drives it into the plant. You can't wash it off, it's in the wheat. So we went to a non-GMO loaf of bread and now we're eating Roundup herbicide. Yeah, yeah. It's not just wheat, barley, rye, oats, uh, potatoes, sweet potatoes, lentils, sugarcane, sunflower, a long list of non-GMO products. Even non-GMO corn and non-GMO canola can get sprayed with Roundup right before harvest. I mean, when I heard this, I, I mean, we've, I've been hearing about this for a little while, but somehow hearing Jeffrey just talk about it um, at this conference, it sank in on a deeper level for me that, uh, that we now have glyphosate, you know, ubiquitous in our food supply. I mean, unless you're going organic, because organic crops still are not sprayed with it. But it's not just wheat, right? Right, it's, it's all the, cere the, the cereals, the pulses, some fruits and vegetables. In fact, the EPA allowed an increased residue level of glyphosate on over 160 crops about three years ago to facilitate the use of Roundup as this desiccant. And so what this means is, no one, Usually the USDA and the, and the FDA both do monitoring of testing for agricultural products and food for a whole range of, of toxins. But they fail to do that for Roundup. And they're starting to do it a little bit, or they're planning to do it, 
but we don't actually know which crops have large amounts of glyphosate in them. Yeah. We even know it sits in the sugar supply. It's in sugar cane, and it's also used in the round of sugar beets. So the issue is, because we don't know, there is really one safe word. Organic. organic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I used to say, buy non-GMO, and if you can, buy organic. Now I say, buy organic. And if you can't, buy non-GMO. But even if you buy non-GMO, you still may be eating the Roundup and other toxic pesticides, of course, which are sprayed on non-GMO products. And it turns out that we are already hitting the tipping point. The tipping point is underway in the United States against GMOs. So the food companies actually are already in a process of removing it. Now we have to deepen the commitment of healthy eaters to not just go non-GMO, but to go organic. And guess what? Organic does not allow the use of GMOs as well as for Roundup. Now, sometimes you'll see GMO and sometimes in the same product line, you'll see non-GMO. I mean, excuse me, non-GMO and organic. I would say of the two, organic is, is the priority because of that is what we're talking about. But sometimes you'll see non-GMO and organic, non-GMO project verified and organic on the same product. That's even better. Now why is that? If organic is already non-GMO, what's the point of having a non-GMO project verification on it? Is there any additional advantage? Yes. Because if there are at-risk ingredients, the 13 GMO crops used or their derivatives, then they for the non-GMO project, you have to test to verify the absence, or at least very low level, of those GMO ingredients. Organic does not require any testing. It's, it's not allowed to intentionally use those ingredients, but if they happen to contaminate, there's no way to know that contamination has occurred unless they voluntarily test it, and it's often not done. But the non-GMO project requires testing. So the gold standard is to have both, but if you don't have both, Organic is the way to go. Yeah. So uh, I just thought this was kind of important information to share. And let me let me add one other piece because some people are afraid with fruits and vegetables, for example. And they're like, I I don't I can't spend my whole paycheck in order to eat whole foods, and they're struggling making ends meet. And sometimes they cost twice as much, quite frankly, to go organic on certain things. And so some people are like, Hey, should I eat my kale or my broccoli or should I eat this organic, you know, donut over here? Because it's organic, and I'm oh. like, no, eat the kale and the broccoli, <laughs> even if it's not organic. And, and you know, the reality is quite simple. That that um, this, there have been a lot of studies done on people having various health outcomes based on various dietary choices. And what we've seen is that you know, fruits and vegetables and whole foods are associated with a lot of positive health outcomes. Those studies were done with people eating, for the most part, conventionally grown produce. So. There is, there is little doubt that if you have to choose between organic donut and non-organic kale, the kale is still probably the way to go. But uh, if you can go organic, we just got another really strong reason to do so, particularly with the grains that are where the most, uh, and the dry foods, which are where the most uh, Roundup is being used. It's also used in potatoes and sweet can. potatoes and things like that. Yeah. It's also used in orchards for, for oranges, etc. Yeah. Now, in addition to that, I just want to add, because this is the up, updated information, um, salmon is now available in a genetically engineered form in Canada. So Unlabeled. Friends don't let friends eat salmon in Canada unless it's wild caught. Um, there's also apples and potatoes, you may know about that, using a new technology, double-stranded RNA, very dangerous. But the biotech industry is trying to claim that these new technologies like gene editing, CRISPR-Cas9, they're safe because they're predictable and precise. Ignore that. I just did an article recently in Huffington Post showing that there was over 1,600 point mutations that were unpredicted and not usually seen. They just say, oh, we're going to do a CRISPR-Cas9 genetically engineering change on this particular thing, and we're going to look at a computer model to predict what side effects is going to happen. And if the side effects in the computer model are fine, we'll be fine. But what actually happened was, in three studies, they actually sequenced the genome of mice, and in each of those cases, there were vastly more mutations than they had predicted, which means all these products coming on the market from gene editing could have these point mutations, and any one of them could turn a harmless substance into a harmful, possibly deadly substance. Yeah. So the bot, it was interesting that Holland, or the Netherlands, just promoted trying to say, oh, these new GMO 2.0 gene editing things, they're not called GMOs, they should not be subject to any regulation whatsoever. Why is that? Because that's the mindset, that's the PR 
uh, talking points of the biotech industry. And so I'm looking for a lawsuit to be fired against them so we can get all the documents that showed the lies like we now have against Monsanto because of the non-Hodgkin's lymphoma class action that forced them to, de to deliver thousands of documents that we now see their own people are describing in these documents. Oh yeah, it looks like Roundup might have caused cancer in this study, or it looks like the deaths in this study may be treatment related. Oh, we, we have to ghostwrite this article and do this. And it's just, they're caught red-handed right now. Yeah. So they have no real defense based on facts, but it never, it never stopped them from continuing to say the disinformation over and over again. Oh, yeah. And in case, in case people watching right now haven't heard about this, so, so lawsuits forced the release of a lot of previously privately held documents that exposed Monsanto's inner workings. And one, one, among many things, and I'm curious what some of the things you found most revelatory in that process, I'm sure none of it surprised you too much, but I'll just say that Henry I. Miller, uh, who has been uh, writing <laughs> extensively, he's been sort of uh, part the of the anti-organic anti and pro-GMO uh, intellectual, I guess Former you could say. FDA guy. Right. Uh, so Henry I. Miller has been, um, you know, he's, he's acclaimed a lot of academic credentials, and he's, he was writing for Forbes and a lot of other publications. And guess what? Oh, well, yeah, what? What happened? Well, well, you look at the documents and you go, oh, Monsanto, can you send me a draft of something? So Monsanto sends him a draft, and he publishes pretty much the draft as his own, not mentioning Monsanto, and in the agreement that Forbes has with their writers that there's it's original material and that no other contributor can come unless it's disclosed. So as soon as it was outed, the New York Times reported, Forbes cut all ties and stopped publishing anything from Henry I. Miller. So what we're seeing, I think, in some ways is an acceleration of forces. On the one hand, we're seeing, uh, up, up until recently, you were pretty safe from glyphosate if you just avoided four or five crops, you know, corn, soy, canola, cotton, and sugar beets. And now we're seeing there's actually 13 GMO crops. Those, those five are most of it, along with alfalfa, but the others are starting to come in potentially more, infiltrating from salmon to apples to potatoes to zucchini to Hawaiian papaya. Um, yellow squash. Yellow too. squash, yeah. And then, but then we're also seeing uh, that glyphosate is being used on other crops right. that are not genetically engineered at all. And so if you're wanting to avoid this probable carcinogen that has so many problems, uh, you know, organic is more important than it's ever been before. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and the good news is that, that more and more people are choosing organic. We're now seeing organic food stock in Walmart and Safeway and Costco right. and Kroger's and um, and the organic industry is accelerating. Uh, more and more farms are switching over. Uh, the bad news there, if I may say, is that organic is going corporate. And uh, so it used to be it was a lot of small scale farms. Now it's really big mega industrial agriculture and they're interested more in making money off of this than they are in uh, trying to create healthy food. Um, there too then, knowing your farmer and farmer's markets and community supported agriculture and growing your own food become really powerful and important steps. But you know what, we can't make the perfect into the enemy of the good. So you do the best you can with what you've got. And if you can go more organic, if you can go more non-GMO, if you can go more local, these are all steps towards helping to create uh, more safety for yourself and the people you love and also to contribute to a healthier food system for all of us. I'm done. All right, that's it. This is Ocean Robbins and Jeffrey Smith from Truth About Cancer Live in Orlando. Thanks for joining us. Safe eating, everyone.